Starship's booster blows our minds. NASA says, I'll have what they're having. Falcon 9 still has a busy month ahead of it, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. On Monday, the orbital launch mount suppression system kicked in just moments before Booster 7 ignited a record number of Raptor 2 engines, creating one of the most powerful controlled blasts planet Earth has ever experienced. Elon following up that the test went well. 14 engines burned the full test duration, double that of the previous record. But do keep in mind, 14 is still less than half of the 33 engines that will be used to lift Starship Super Heavy's fat ass off the pad. So yeah, you haven't seen anything yet. Things are about to get gnarly in Texas, brah. Texas. B7's next test will be an approximately 20 second firing with the max amount of oxygen put into its tank to test autogenous pressurization, basically to make sure the Raptors are getting fed properly. Then possibly one more static fire after that, perhaps all 33 engines, but then onto the orbital launch attempt. In the meantime, crews will work on repairing damage done to the pad, and Focus has also returned to the rocket's upper half, Starship 24. Resting adjacent to its booster on test stand A, its damaged center engine has been removed and taken to the shipyard, so it may need another static fire as well. A couple of weeks ago, I told you NASA was planning on modifying its Artemis flight plan using what they call option B, which would allow astronauts to ride on HLS down to the lunar surface for Artemis 4, in addition to the crewed lunar landing on Artemis 3. Well, this week, NASA made it binding, awarding SpaceX this second contract, and so HLS will need to be upgraded. Quote, the aim of this new work under option B is to develop and demonstrate a Starship lunar lander that meets NASA's sustaining requirements for missions beyond Artemis 3, including docking with Gateway, accommodating four crew members, and delivering more mass to the surface. But moving on, meow, on Saturday morning, SpaceX launched two more communication satellites for Intel sat from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, riding upon the third Falcon 9 booster to fly for a record-tying 14th mission. However, this was also the booster's final flight, in that it needed to be expended in order to squeeze the maximum amount of oomph out of it. Both Galaxy 32 and 31 were deployed successfully to geosynchronous transfer orbit 33 and 38 minutes after liftoff, respectively. Another UTLSAT mission is expected to launch from Slick 40 on Sunday carrying the 10B electric communication satellite on top of a booster for its 11th flight, which will also be expended for the extra push. Then on Monday, SpaceX and NASA could launch the next commercial resupply mission to the International Space Station, CRS-26. This date to fly the Cargo Dragon capsule was pushed because of Hurricane Nicole's Florida landfall last week. And finally, iSpace announced their Mission 1 launch date to the Atlas Crater on the Moon using a Falcon 9 rocket to get there. The Global Lunar Exploration Company is currently targeting Monday, November 28th to demonstrate and validate their lander's design and technology. It will, quote, lay the groundwork for unleashing the moon's potential and transforming it into a robust and vibrant economic system, says Takesha Hakamda, iSpace founder and CEO. SpaceX was targeting tonight for the launch of 52 Starlink satellites from Vandenberg, but decided to push the mission back due to a need to take a closer look at the data from the booster static fire. The company will announce a new launch date once confirmed. The Donate a Starlink feature on the Starlink website is now active and ready for your charity, but be forewarned, donations are not tax deductible. Givers have two options to choose from. They can either donate to a specific organization of their choice or donate to a predetermined cause chosen by the Starlink team. In other related news, questions were raised when it was discovered that SpaceX Starlink bought ads on Twitter, leading people to suspect that Elon's new company, which is in financial distress at the moment, was receiving bailouts from his other companies. But the balls clarified that it was just a tiny ad package to test effectiveness of Twitter's advertising in Australia and Spain. Did the same thing for Facebook, Instagram, and Goggle. Back in the early summer, I went over a story that explained how several woke employees at SpaceX were fired for writing a letter within the company complaining about Elon's base tweets. Quote, Elon's behavior in the public sphere is a frequent source of distraction and embarrassment for us. End quote. Really? Because seeing social justice warriors melt down over incorrectly used pronouns is what's embarrassing to me. Ironically, Elon also now owns Twitter and has been laying off woke employees there who are trying to sabotage that company. Anyway, this week it was reported that either nine employees or nine more employees who circulated the letter of feels at SpaceX were also terminated. Two employees told the Times that a meeting of 20 engineers was held the day after the firings, where SpaceX Vice President John Edwards told said engineers that SpaceX is Elon and Elon is SpaceX. Yeah, that's right, suckas! Know your role. I know firsthand what cancel culture is, 
It's a weapon wielded by the weak who seethe when they hear opinions different from their own. So trust me when I tell you this ain't that. This is a cluster of snowflakes who got too comfortable in their false sense of entitlement to the point they forgot who writes the checks. If nothing else, they canceled themselves, shot themselves in the foot, then stuck that foot in their mouths. And I can guarantee that if Elon was some far left ideologue who wouldn't shut up about gender, Marxism, and equity, these Karens would be the first to dress up as the company cheerleaders. We all know the type. In fact, the so-called space community is full of them. But I'm still here, listening to their bullshit. So take my advice, Karens. If you don't like your boss's politics, be an adult and pack your things. Try building your own company. Or just go work for NASA and suck on the taxpayer's teat like a true socialist. You'd fit in well there. That agency is all about virtue signaling under the current administration. And to any Karens watching who are offended by what I'm saying now, same message to you. Cry all you want. This is my channel. I'll say what I have to say. Nobody is making you stay. Just leave. <laughs> okay, you're gonna wanna listen to this. I want to start and end today's promotion with some good news. Inflation was down half a percentage point for October. Please clap. The Epic Times is reporting that Thanksgiving dinner is going to cost Americans a record-setting 20% more this year. Turkeys may be hard to come by in some areas thanks to the avian flu that killed a record number of delicious birds in the U.S. Of course, the economy still sucks, as made evident by mass layoffs happening before the holiday season. Then there's the diesel shortage that is impacting our farmers and truckers. Have you guys even heard about the protests happening all over Europe right now? because the media is not reporting on it. And of course, we can't forget the wheat supply affected by the war in Ukraine that almost went full-blown World War III the other day thanks to a wayward Ukrainian missile hitting a NATO country. Oh wait, I almost forgot. We also learned that we can't fully trust crypto anymore or our so-called leaders, but most of us already knew that. Now back to the good news, as promised. You can help hedge against chaos and the unexpected by investing in an emergency food kit, or 10, from my Patriot Supply. Each kit contains a variety of meals providing 2,000 calories per day for one person. So if you love your wife and kids, maybe get one for each of them, if you want. I guess it is Christmas. And right now you can save $250 off every three month emergency food supply you order. It's their biggest deal since before the pandemic. So go to preparewithspace.com and get your order in before it's too late, eh? They do ship to Canadians. That's preparewithspace.com. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. On Wednesday, NASA's SLS overtook SpaceX's Falcon Heavy as the world's most powerful operational rocket when it lifted off from LC-39B at Kennedy Space Center, Florida, carrying an uncrewed Orion spacecraft for its first test flight known as Artemis 1. And liftoff of Artemis 1, we rise together back to the moon and beyond. Using four RS-25 engines from the space shuttle era and two solid rocket boosters, the 100% non-reusable vehicle soared its way to the heavens in the middle of the night when it was harder to see and while America was sleeping. After jettisoning the twin SRBs, the interim cryogenic propulsion stage separated from the core stage and kicked in for a perigee raise burn to put it in orbit, and then a translunar injection burn was lit to put Orion and its 10 CubeSats on course for the moon, followed by ICPS separation for the capsule's coast phase. Over the next week or so, the spacecraft will fall to the moon, orbit it for six days, coming as close as 60 miles, or 97 clicks, of the lunar surface, then take another week or so to return to Earth. Although no astronauts are on board, a crash test dummy and Snoopy were deemed to have just enough right stuff for this mission. Well, that's enough for today. Thanks for stopping by. Huge thank you goes out to everyone supporting the channel. Check out the description below if you would like to do the same. Regardless, hope you all have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. Godspeed.